Albert Einstein, Richard Branson, Bill Gates, John F. Kennedy, Tony Robbins, Michael Phelps, Will Smith. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of industries. What else do they have in common? Well, they all have ADHD, but you don't hear much about that, do you? You know what you hear even less about? The successful women navigating ADHD. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm your host, Tracy Otsuka. I'm an attorney, not a doctor, a lifelong student, not a coach. I'm also the creator of Cortography, a patent pending system that helps people like you figure out what they should do with their life. And we're here today to talk ADHD, your superpowers, your symptoms, your workarounds, and how you proudly stand out instead of trying to fit in. I credit my ADHD for some of my greatest superpowers. And you know what? I spy a happier life for you, too. So without further ado, a shiny new episode is starting now. Hello, I am Tracy Otsuka, and I wanted to welcome you to episode 30 of ADHD for Smartass Women. This week's topic is all about the Apple Watch 4 and how I use it to manage my ADHD brain. Since we're talking about the Apple Watch, I'm going to be talking about Apple products in general. And I know they're expensive. I did not want an Apple Watch. I didn't want to wear a watch, period, but I really didn't want to wear an Apple Watch. I don't even like the way the Apple Watch looks. But I have to say, I feel like it has literally given me my life back. That's how much I love it. And there may be Android workarounds. I don't know if there's an Android comparable watch, but I don't know what they are. So this is all about the Apple Watch, unfortunately. And because I started with an iPhone and then I went to a MacBook, I've just sort of stuck with Apple products so that I can make my life as simple as possible. You know, I'm not a tech geek. I have very little patience. I just want things to work with as little pain as possible. And I personally think the Apple Watch is worth every penny and more. It has made my life so much easier. I feel more in control. I feel less stressed that I'm missing something. I feel more confident and trusting in myself that when I say, okay, this is when I was supposed to, you know, be at this particular place at a certain time. And then I show up. So there are times where I had the wrong time for an appointment and I literally, I would just abdicate. Oh yeah, it must be me. You know, I must be the one who, you know, somehow I put it into my calendar incorrectly. And then it would turn out that most of the time it wasn't me. And there really was a mix up, maybe 20% of the time it was me. And what I found is now that I have this Apple Watch, I am more like everything is just my life is so much more planned. I am much more trusting in myself that when I show up to an appointment, I know that, you know what, that is really when the time of the appointment. So anyway, what I have done with the Apple Watch is I have basically uploaded my working memory, which was completely shot to the Apple Watch. My whole goal in using this watch has been to build structures around myself to shore up my weaknesses so I can focus on my strengths. I don't have the cellular version. I have the GPS version. And honestly, I don't even know what the cellular version would do that I would need because, you know, maybe it's that I don't know, but there's nothing that I'm missing as far as I never feel like I go somewhere and I can't use the Apple Watch the way I need to use it. So, What happened is when I first got the watch, which was probably about six months ago, I was totally overwhelmed. I looked everywhere for videos, blog posts, because I wanted to figure out how to use the Apple Watch to shore up my ADHD brain, but I couldn't find anything. So I have wanted to do this podcast for a while, but I knew I really had to live with the Apple Watch for a period of time, test out a bunch of different apps to really see what would work best for my brain. And again, you know, every brain is different and every ADHD brain is different on top of that. So what works for me may not work for you, but because we share a similar nonlinear brain, it's probably a good place to start. This is also, it's not an in-depth instruction manual on what the Apple Watch can do. Heaven forbid you do not want to come to me for that. This is really just me talking to you about the best, simplest ways that I have found 
to set up and use my Apple Watch to build that structure around me that best supports my ADHD brain. Okay. So because it helps me in my brain, perhaps it will help you as well. And I'm going to go through, I think I have 11 points that I want to make. And some of them are, you know, features of the phone. Some of them are actually apps. And those are the 11 structures that I use and have built around myself so that they play well with my ADHD brain, right? They shore me up. They make sure that I am where I need to be when I need to be there. So let me just start. I'm just dithering on here. Okay. Number one, the number one thing that I love about the Apple Watch is the alarms, the timers, and reminders. And I have to tell you, the number one reason I love the Apple Watch, it's for the alarms. The timers and reminders are okay. We have those on our phone, but the alarms are amazing. I literally feel like the alarm all by itself gave me my brain back. What do I mean? Well, I don't have to wash the laundry five times because everything smells like mildew or so wrinkled because I totally forgot I was doing the wash before I got distracted with, I don't know, my work, my kids, my dog, my husband, a Donald Trump tweet. You probably get me, right? (laughs) You start the wash and then you totally forget that you were even doing the wash. And then three days later, you're looking for, you know, the shirt or the pants, and you realize, oh, it's still in the wash, it's in a ball, and now it smells like mildew. So now I need to rewash it. With my Apple Watch, I can also actually cook again. I don't burn things anymore because I don't know about you, but if I'm not in the kitchen, I forget that I'm even cooking. And if I am in the kitchen and I have seven items I'm trying to time for a dinner party, or even three items I'm trying to time for a family dinner, I will literally turn around in circles with a pan in my hand when the timing gets even a little complicated. I get so overwhelmed that it's hard for me to even pause and think the timing of the menu through. Now, I have to tell you that was not me five years ago. I could literally cook a seven course meal out of a Thomas Keller cookbook for 12 people and I wouldn't even think twice about it. I would have all the courses on a list with time in and time out. And although it never felt 100% natural to me, I could do it no problem. But my executive functioning skills, my ability to plan and organize a meal and plan and organize a lot, frankly, it literally fell off the rails once I hit my mid to probably like 47, 48, right? And although I do see the symptoms of my ADHD from the time I was a child, I don't think I would have qualified for the diagnosis because although I was completely time blind, I did most things in the last minute, like I loved adrenaline. I had way too much energy and I often at, you know, said exactly what I thought. I think that's called blurting. At that time, I don't consider my symptoms impairing. In fact, I actually see my symptoms as responsible for my successes. Granted, life would have been easier if I was always on time, if I bit my tongue more, if I was more successful at keeping to a schedule. But my energy, my creativity, how quickly I could make decisions, you know, and on and on and on, that far outweighed the negatives. And I also think I was in businesses with hard and fast deadlines, and that kept me in line. Today, I have to make and keep many of my own deadlines, you know, for the business that I'm in. And that is so much harder, right? Because it's all up to me. I also know that if I want to cook multiple courses today, I literally just put my head down and I work, but I have no idea how to sequence courses. I have zero sense of time and it has gotten worse and worse. So I digress, but I just wanted to give you a background of why I needed those alarms and timers so much and how the Apple Watch has helped me. And it took me a while to figure this out because it's confusing, but this is what you need to know. And I wish someone would have said this and would have said it with the ADHD brain in mind, because then I would have paid attention that they would have understood what it was that I wasn't understanding and what it was that I needed from this Apple Watch. Okay, so let's go into timers, alarms, and reminders. Your iPhone and your Apple Watch have all three of those, okay? But your Mac and your iPad only have the reminders built in. You can also only set one timer on your watch or your phone, which is not ideal if you're cooking or you have multiple items that you don't want to forget. So that means you either have to use your alarms or your reminders. So just forget about the timers altogether unless there's just one thing that you want to time. Beyond this, because I have been known to forget what the hell I'm doing, I can often set my one timer 
and have it go off and not even be sure what I set it for. Because timers don't have labels. Alarms and reminders do have labels. So you can say, set an alarm for 25 minutes to take the dessert out of the refrigerator, or set an alarm for 20 minutes to take the salmon out of the oven, or set an alarm for 50 minutes for the laundry. In other words, I can set as many alarms as I want, and they will all have a label so I won't forget what the alarm is for. And especially when you're cooking, you can imagine if you've got five things that, you know, you've got alarms going on about You need to know what those alarms are for, right? It's just common sense. There's also something, there's a feature that the Apple Watch has on the alarms that I love. It's called haptic feedback. And again, it's probably the best feature for the ADHD brain on the Apple Watch. So haptic feedback is this light tap on the top of my wrist. You know, it's kind of a cross between a tapping and a little bit of a buzzing. But it is so much less annoying than a chime, which I often ignore and then I forget about. The best way to describe the haptic feedback, it's like someone's tapping you to gently remind you. And then what's even better is it's followed by a request that shows up on your watch to stop the tapping or to snooze it. And I love this because if I'm in the middle of something, I can keep snoozing it so I don't forget. You can't do that with the reminders. So let me go into the reminders. There are also reminders, but reminders are problematic to me because like I just said, I often miss them because they tap you once and then they pop on your wrist in the reminder app, but they don't keep reminding you. And so I see it once and then I forget, you know, I'll think, okay, I'm on something right now. I won't forget this. I'll get back to it in two minutes. And then two minutes goes by and I've totally forgotten that any reminder even went off. I think that the reminders are best for recurring appointments in your calendar and probably also for setting reminders when you're, for example, at Target to pick up toothpaste, because you can literally set a reminder on your phone that will buzz you when you're within a certain distance of Target and it'll say, remember to pick up toothpaste. And you can say, you know, remind you right before you go in or remind you when you're leaving a certain location. So a lot of times I will have that. I I won't even realize I'm at a Target, you know, in terms of I'm next door to a Target or I go into Target for something else. And I've totally forgotten about this reminder that I set for myself that will remind me when I'm in Target. Oh yeah, don't forget the toothpaste even though it's not on my current shopping list. Now, if you're using reminders for work and you want to have a record of them, the benefit to a reminder versus an alarm is that they're shared via iCloud, which will then sync them to your Mac and your iPad. Alarms won't do that. They just disappear once you get rid of them, once you delete them. Both reminders and alarms allow you to use your voice to set up an alert, which I love when I say set up an alert, to set up a reminder or set up an alarm. And so what you do on your Apple Watch is you just push the button at the top right of the watch face. I'm right-handed, and so I wear the watch on my left hand, and that's called the digital crown. It's the button that allows you to scroll as well. And so you can literally just push that button, talk to your watch, and say, set a reminder in 40 minutes to take out the wash or set an alarm in 40 minutes to take out the wash. And when you're talking about wash, I would always recommend the alarm. I also love the haptic feedback on my Apple Watch as an alarm when I wake up in the morning. I just like that haptic feedback so much more for everything. It just works so much better than setting up notifications on my iPhone, which I may or may not hear. So I sleep with my Apple Watch and it wakes me up in the morning. So I, as you can imagine, or as I've been saying, I use alarms whenever I can, but there is a downside to the alarms. And You know, this is part of the problem with the Apple Watch. You don't really know, oh, is there a workaround? It takes you many months to kind of figure it out unless you're a techie. And I'm not a tech geek. I just aren't. You know, I'm not. I just want to know how to use the thing as efficiently as I possibly can with as little work as I need, you know, to figure it all out. So I use alarms whenever I can, but there is a downside. They don't delete themselves like a reminder where you check that they've been done when they come up. So at some point, this means that you're going to set an alarm for 30 minutes and you're going to discover that an alarm has already been set for that time, but not with a label that you will remember. So what I do is I go through my alarms every couple of weeks and I delete them all. 
except for my wake up alarms. But I'll tell you more about that in a bit. And it's really simple to delete the alarms. You just tap on the alarm on your watch and then you go through each individual alarm and you delete it. And I tend to do that, you know, when I'm in a doctor's office or I'm just somewhere where I'm sitting doing nothing. And the Apple Watch is on my wrist. So it's always there with me. Now, you also need to know this. Alarms and timers that you set up on your Apple Watch are different than the alarms and timers that you set up on your iPhone iPhone alarms and timers will come up on your wrist, but alarms and timers that you set on your watch, they are not going to come up on your iPhone. I know this makes little sense. That's just the way it is. So in order to set an alarm or timer to come up on your phone and watch, you need to set it up from your phone. It took me the longest time to figure that out. Now, if it's important that you have multiple countdown timers... So, and this is primarily probably for something like cooking. So you're not just putting in several courses for a meal. And for that, I would set an alarm. But you want to know how much time is left for each course on your countdown timer. An alarm, a timer, or a reminder, it's not going to work because that'll tell you when the alert will go off, but you'll have to do the subtraction yourself to figure out how much time is left. And remember, Apple only gives us one timer. So if you're cooking and you're trying to gauge when everything is going to be done and come out together, in that case, I would use a multiple timer app like Timer Plus. It's probably the best one, certainly the best one that I've been able to find. And that is on your phone and you can set up all the individual timers for each item on one page and just use your phone. They have a watch app for Timer Plus, but it's terrible. The timers show up, but then they just disappear once you reach your time. It doesn't buzz. It doesn't vibrate. So I wouldn't even realize my time is up. It is the best app that I could find for this kind of use. Okay. So what else do I use alarms or reminders for? I think I mentioned that I set up an alarm to wake me up at 630 every morning. I call it workday wake up and I can set it up for workdays only. And then I also have an alarm for 7 a.m., which I call weekend wake up. And that is only for Saturdays and Sundays. And you set the alarms on your watch using the alarm complication. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what complications are in a minute. It's an orange circle. It looks like an alarm clock. As I said, I wear the watch to bed and it uses haptic feedback to wake you up. And I just find it's a nice way to wake up. Now, it may not be enough. You may need an alarm that is really jarring to get yourself up. I don't have a lot of trouble getting up in the morning and I tend to be you know, a fairly early riser. So the alarm set on my Apple Watch works for me as an alarm clock in the morning. You can also set recurring reminders to take out the trash, pay the mortgage, give your dog her heartworm medication, take your medication. You can't really do that with an alarm. So do it with a reminder. And that reminder, if you set it up on your phone, is going to show up across all devices. That said, I would still make sure to check into your reminders every day on your phone or on your computer so that you know what's coming up. I still don't completely trust the reminders on my Apple Watch. I feel like sometimes they show up and other times I just plain miss them. And I'm still not sure if that's me or there's something going on with reminders. Okay, what's the second thing that I love about the Apple Watch? You can find your phone so easily. This past weekend, I was in the garden for hours and it suddenly dawned on me that I had dropped my phone. And I had meant to pick it up, but then I got distracted and I forgot. And the scary thing was we had spread three yards of mulch in the front yard. And I had no idea if it was under the mulch or under the boxwood that lined the house. I just had no idea where this phone was. And it was starting to get dark and I start, I panicked. Well, what you can do, I remembered, oh, I can ping my phone on my Apple Watch. So I swiped up on my watch to get to the control center and then right under the little airplane icon, there's a phone icon. When you press this icon, it pings your phone. Even better, if you're in the dark and you can't find your phone, like, you know, the mulch situation, or you just want to know, is my phone at the bottom of my purse somewhere? If you continue to press on that phone icon, the flash will light up and blink. So I found my phone, no problem at all. It was under some mulch, <laughs> but not too deep. I would have never been able to find it without my Apple Watch. Okay, number three, on the Apple Watch, there is a built-in flashlight. So you can use it, for example, it's perfect when you're in the dark 
and you're trying to put a key into a lock and there are several flashlight options on your watch. And because, again, you're going to find them by swiping up to your control center and because it's on your wrist, your hands free, it is just so much easier than, you know, trying to do that with your phone. So, okay, let's talk about complications. When you get your watch, you're going to start reading all about complications. And it's such a silly name. I didn't know what they were. And I think you need to understand what complications are. So apparently it's an old word that watchmakers use that means anything you add on the face of the watch. So, you know, when you have like a regular watch, not an Apple watch, and you've got the date, you've got moon phases, and you've got different time zones, all of those things are called complications. So for the Apple watch, a complication just means any app that you're adding to the face of the watch. And I want you to trust me here. Too many apps that you add to the face of your watch because you can set it all up just exactly the way you want it is going to confuse you. And then you are not going to use the watch. Okay, sounds and haptics. For us distracted types, set the tones, the rings, the haptic alerts louder so you can hear them. It breaks your concentration because I don't know about you, but when I'm in hyper-focus mode, the haptic feedback works really well with me. That does break it for me. But if there's a tone or a ring, it needs to be louder. So you go to sounds and haptics. It's super simple. You scroll down to haptic alerts and turn them on and then check prominence so that they're as loud. You know, in the case of the haptic feedback, it vibrates or it taps you a little bit more forcefully. Okay. Number four, Spotify. I can have Spotify on my wrist. Now, I have to tell you, I am not a music person. And I know that is blasphemy for many of you. Certainly blasphemy for everybody in my family. My husband and both my kids are music kids. And I just find music so distracting to all the brilliance in my brain. But this is the thing. I'm joking when I say that, right? Sort of. Music affects emotion. So I have forced myself to listen to it, especially when my brain is hyper-focusing on anything that is not creating positive emotion in my body. But in order for me to actually listen to music, it has to be super easy because it is not my first go-to at all. So what I did is I bought the Apple wireless ear pods and I bought them because it's easy. You know, I had one of those connected headsets that wraps around your neck, but connecting it to anything always took way too long. With the ear pods, all I do is put them in my ears and it's automatically connected. So that makes it so easy for me to just go right to music or go right to a podcast or go right to an audible book. It's just, it all works so well. What I also did is I created an ADHD for smart ass women playlist on Spotify with the help of members in our group. And I listened to it all the time. The whole point of the playlist was positive, feel good, happy, upbeat music. And I have to tell you that it totally works. So I have Spotify on, it's a complication on the face of my watch. And I can literally just click Spotify and right away is my playlist. So. You can also, you can find this playlist in our Facebook group, but I'm also going to post it in the show notes. But there's something about now, Spotify does not allow you yet to listen to music without your phone. So it's not like you can just take your um, Spotify playlist on your Apple Watch and go for a run and, you know, have your ear pods. You need your phone with you. But I'm pretty sure, you know, from what I've been reading that that is in the works and it will happen soon. There are some hacks around it to get a playlist onto your Spotify on your watch, but I didn't go there. I'm just going to wait because again, you know, I usually have my phone with me. And so that works for me. So I have Spotify on my complications. So that's number four. And it really, really has helped me. So again, if I'm feeling a little bit down, I know that is one of my first go-tos. It's exercise and it's music. And right away that can, in nature, those three things can get me out of any funk and they can do it in record time. Okay, number five. I have a calculator on my Apple Watch on my wrist. I have no idea why the iPhone calculator app doesn't sync to the Apple Watch, but it doesn't. And I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I'm kind of like Barbie. I hate math. I glaze over. It just, I can't do it. So I have an app called PCalc, which is basically a calculator on my wrist. It's a little expensive. It's $9.99. It's for conversions 
calculations of all kinds from currency to tips to almost anything a scientist, engineer or student you know, would need from a math standpoint. And I have that on my wrist. It's not a complication, so it's not on my watch face. But it is a complication that I've downloaded that's on, you know, the next page with all my other apps. So it's really simple to get to. Number six, I love the walkie talkie. The walkie talkie is part of the Apple Watch. It is fantastic for family communication. So my daughter's in New York City and I literally, she's doing an internship this time. Well, she goes to school there too, but she's back there doing an internship. And I can literally just click a button on the app the walkie talkie app on my Apple watch. And I can right away start talking to her if she's available. She's not always available, but when she is, it's so convenient. When I have a quick question or a comment for her, she pings me constantly as well. I use this when my husband goes grocery shopping or when he's upstairs in the barn working and I'm too lazy to go find him. I just click on the walkie talkie and it's literally like having a walkie talkie on your wrist. Okay. Number seven, the world clock. So I have that on a complication on my watch face. Love that. Right now, as I said, I have a daughter who's in New York City. I have a teenager who's traveling through Europe and I have a VA in the Philippines. I am so bad at calculating time. And I hate to constantly Google what time is it in Manila, right? So I have a complication set on my watch. I think it is the best thing I did. And so the way that you customize and get things on your watch face is, and I, I'm going to put a link so that, you know, it's really simple for you to be able to just click on that link and know how to do it. But all you do is you press on the watch face, you hit customize, and then you can customize your entire watch face. Meaning, you know, for example, I have my battery up on the right-hand side. I have Spotify. On, this is on my watch face. Spotify on the left-hand side. I have my exercise on the bottom. I have Bear, which is an app I'm going to talk about in the middle right. I have the world clock on the left. And then I have, I'm trying to see what's on my right. I don't think I have anything on my right. I need to add something on my right. Obviously, I never use it. Okay. So what I did is I customized my world clock to include all time zones right there on my watch face. So I no longer have to calculate times. I just click on the world clock icon on my watch and then I can scroll through the three time zones that I've got there and it's right there for me. It is so incredibly convenient and saves me so much time. And I don't have to be in front of a computer, right? Or talking into my iPhone, trying to figure out what time is it in a particular you know, part of the world, which you know, I need to reach someone there. Okay, number eight, maps. Maps, if you set it up to notify you, especially for the haptic feedback, it taps you on your wrist when you should turn right or when you should turn left. And I just love this because there really is something about when I'm driving, I already don't feel particularly comfortable, you know, in front of the wheel. I just feel like there's so much going on and I am trying to be so alert all the time. And then, you know, I've got my phone mounted and I'm trying to follow my phone and my eyesight is no longer great. So I just get really discombobulated in a car when I'm trying to get somewhere versus with my Apple Watch, my map app on my Apple Watch will tap me on the wrist and let me know, turn right here, turn left in 20 feet, you know, drive straight for a half a mile. And I just love that it's all on my wrist. It just is so much more civilized and it calms my brain down. Okay. So. Now I'm going to tell you about a few little apps that I love. Okay. Number nine, the tile app. I am constantly leaving my purse behind. In truth, I hate carrying a purse. So I often just carry a wallet. But the problem is because I don't always carry a purse. I forget that I have a purse with me when I actually carry one. And my husband is always counting everything I have and then going back into restaurants for my purse or my wallet, right? Because I'm just always forgetting it. So I have something called a tile that is in my wallet and you can use these tiles on everything. You can hang them on your keys. You can use them again on your purse. You can stick them on your laptop, on your iPad, on your remote control. Basically, you can put them on everything you lose. My son just bought an expensive bag in Germany. I just bought him a tile for that and I just bought him a tile for his backpack, which he was constantly leaving at school. I carry one in my wallet and so... What you do is you download the free tile app and then you can ring your things with your phone. Now, 
you'd think I'd have learned by now, but I can't tell you how often I see something in a store. I put my purse or wallet down to deal with it, you know, to either try it on or to kind of move it around. I get distracted and then I forget to pick up my purse or my wallet. With these tiles in the tile app, if I lose something and I'm too far to ping it so that it'll tell me, oh, this is where you left it in the store, I can open up the tile app on my Apple Watch or my iPhone and see where the last place was that I left it. There's also apparently a built-in community that can help you find whatever you have a tile app on. I haven't tried that yet. So as I said, I'm putting one on my son's backpack for school. You can also ping your tile, whatever it's on, using your Apple Watch. For example, if you lose your car in the parking lot, do you do that? I do that all the time. I forget where the hell I parked. You can just leave a tile in your car all the time. Probably what I would do in that case, if I left a tile in the car, which I'm going to put one there, I would then go onto the tile app and figure out where my car was. Now, I wish the tile would put a geotag around my tiles so that when I'm leaving without my bag or without my wallet, it would remind me but sadly it doesn't do that. And there are also rumors of an Apple tag that's being developed for iOS 13. And I read somewhere that they think that that may be released in September. So that's another thing that, you know, hopefully we have to look forward to. And then maybe we don't need the tiles, but I love the tiles. Number 10 is the Bear app. Now, I was a huge fan of Apple Notes until I discovered Bear. I loved Apple Notes because it was so easy to call it up and I could just write my notes in there and I could search. But Bear is better than Apple Notes because number one for me, if aesthetics are important to you, it is so much prettier and cleaner. It's really beautiful. And you can have a black theme, you can have a white theme, you can have a solarized theme, which is kind of creamish in color. The way my brain works, simple, beautiful, good design just calms it down. Clutter causes my brain to go round and round, and I literally get stuck in the clutter. This Bear app is the prettiest app to organize my notes, so much prettier than Apple Notes. I love it. And I love that with Bear, I can tag everything. So Apple Notes uses folders. And oftentimes I have trouble finding things because one note could be in a number of folders and I forget which folder, you know, it's in. So now what I do is I just tag my notes in Bear and it's so much easier to find things. You know, there's also something about how my brain works and you may be able to relate to this. So if I have to think about what folder I might have put something in first, just makes me anxious. Like I'm going to lose that note because I don't organize things like a linear brained person does. And I really struggle with that question of, okay, what folder should I put this in? So I'll find it when I need it. And depending on the day, I don't always decide to put things in the same folder. Now, a neurotypical brain person is probably going to listen to this and think, what the hell is she talking about? But if you too have a nonlinear brain, you are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. It's almost like I feel my way through life. And so if I have to figure out what file something is in, I almost have to get into my body first. And that then leads me to how I was feeling when I organized the file, which then takes me to the correct file. I know that sounds crazy, but you can probably relate. So knowing I can now tag the note in a number of ways and just get rid of that whole angst about what file to put the note in and what file did I put the note in and am I, I going to be able to find it when I need it? That is so huge for me, which is why I love this Bear app. What's even better, Bear syncs with everything. It syncs with my MacBook, my iPad, my iPhone. Apple Notes does this as well. But Bear also syncs with my Apple Watch. I have the complication, which is basically the icon on my watch face. So Wherever I am, I can take a quick note using my voice. And when I get to my laptop, I can then organize it if I need to organize it further. It's just really easy to get to. It's really easy to use. Just like Apple Notes. Apple Notes is easy to use too, but it has so many more app options than Apple Notes. Like Apple Notes though, you can start out by just using the most basic features first and then adding from there when you're ready. It's very intuitive, very pretty. It just calms my brain down. I feel like my information is safe. I feel like I'm going to be able to find it when I need it. 
And also in Bear, which I was never able to figure out in Apple Notes, you can add links to documents. And there are so many more ways to export. Like literally, you can export in every way imaginable. So I am really raving about Bear and the fact that it works on everything now. And I'm out and about and I can click on Bear on my Apple Watch without even having to go to my phone. I just love it. Okay. I think I said I was going to give you 10 items, but I'm throwing in an 11th. And then I have a couple other ones that I'm working on that I'll come back and I'll report on later. Okay. Number 11 is Cheat Sheet. Oh, that's what I have on the bottom. That's right. So the bottom right of my Apple Watch face, I have Cheat Sheet. Cheat Sheet is for really simple notes. So non-sensitive information that doesn't need encryption because, you know, if someone finds your watch, I guess they could get into it pretty quickly. But it's for really simple notes and it's a way to remember things you always forget. Things that you need at a moment's notice. Logins, homework assignments, flight numbers, gate numbers, hotel room numbers, grocery items. It is so simple and convenient to list. The key is, and you, and you can put this little icon with it too, you know, so if it's something that you need to remember for your husband, like, oh, I don't know if I had to remember, you know, this particular idea for a birthday gift for my husband, I could put like an icon of a little heart. And what I love about Cheat Sheet, because, you know, for us, it is all about how quickly we can get in and get out of an app. Because when it's quick to get in and out, that means we're going to use it. And Cheat Sheet is so simple to get in and out of, especially if you have the complication on your watch face. Okay, so there are three other apps that I want to mention, but I'm going to tell you, I'm just starting to use them. I'm just starting to work on them. I think I love them. And I think that if I get those three things really solid, They're on my watch face. I'll have felt that I've built the scaffolding as best as I can using the Apple Watch to keep me on track, okay? And so the other things that I'm working on is, number one, I listen to a lot of podcasts, especially when I'm driving or gardening. And my podcasts right now, they're a mess, meaning I'm not even sure how I get in to find podcasts. I just, you know, scroll down, I search for podcasts and I just go in whatever, you know, I've downloaded that attracts my attention or catches my eye. And I would like to have my podcasts be much more organized. So there is an app for your Apple Watch called Pocket Casts that I've just started to experiment with. I am going to organize my podcast first on my MacBook, and then I will be able to pull it up on my Apple Watch. And I love that if I organize it and pull it up on my Apple Watch, that means that I don't need my phone. Because as we know, if I'm listening to a podcast in the garden, I'm going to lose my phone. And so I love that I can just listen to it just with my ear pods and my Apple Watch. So Pocket Casts. Audible is an app that I use a lot on my phone. If you're ADHD, chances are that you do a lot of audiobooks. Well, the Apple Watch Audible complication allows you to download your audiobooks to your watch so that you can go for a run or a walk without your phone, just your wireless earbuds and listen and your watch and listen to your audiobooks. Now, it takes a bit of time to download your audiobooks to your watch. So you need to do this while you're sleeping, not right before you want to, you know, go for your run. So it's Audible, it's Podcasts. The last one that I'm working on right now is called the Things app. The Things app organizes your life, your calendar, your projects, your to-do list, your planner. It's also one of those apps that is visually very pleasing and intuitive. It reminds me a lot of the Bear app, which is why I think I am actually going to be able to use this because I've tried everything and I just can't use them consistently. So that is why I'm. they're still out there. I'm not raving about any of those three yet, but I'm pretty hopeful and I'll report back. Okay, so as always, that's what I have for you this week. Of course, if you'd love to write a review, I would love it. (laughs) If you'd like to know more about me, our patent pending cartography system that teaches you how to figure out which of the many interests that you have is the one that you should pursue. Or if you have a comment, a guest you'd like me to interview or a topic idea for this podcast, go to my website at tracyatsuka.com. You can download the show notes there as well. Click on podcast in the navigation bar. There's a microphone. If you don't want to type to your right, you can leave me an audio message. You can also reach out to me if you do like to type at tracy at tracyatsuka.com. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you here next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smartass Women podcast. 
I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka, and we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you liked what you heard, we sure would appreciate a review. And not coincidentally, ADHD for Smartass Women, well, that's also the name of our free Facebook group. Go look it up. We're a totally smart-ass community of successful, ambitious women who share our ADHD wins, questions, and workarounds. We'd love to have you join us. You can also find all my details over at tracyoutsuka.com. Don't forget, I spy a happier life for us, and I'll see you again next week.